Hey everybody, welcome back to Wine Up TV. I'm your host Wayne, and I'm here with Frederico. He likes to be called Fred. I'll call him Fred. Um, he's from Italy, and I'll tell you, he's got five amazing wines. He's going to tell you all about when we come back. You know what? This ain't about me. This is all about Federico. Fred. Um, dude, he comes in. He loves the Ramones. He's jamming the Ramones. He, you got to put these on, man. Come on. You got yeah, to put the. Yeah, immediately. Uh, you know, my wine's are so deep. That you got to put these on, man. It's I like. the 3D glasses, too. It's like fucking A, dude. This, this guy is rocking it right off the bat. <laughs> who, does, who wouldn't love this guy? My new BFF on Facebook. Um, anyway, you know what? You have, um, you've been making wine for a while. He's had, this is like his third career. He's very complex, um, just a great guy to talk to. Came in my door uh, with, with one of my reps, uh, Chris from Venom, and he just said, okay, this is what we're gonna do. And I tasted these wines, they're, they're rustic. This is what Italy's all about. So, Fred, take a minute to tell, you, tell us a little bit about you, your vineyards, your philosophy, and, and your whole program. Oh, that's easy, that's easy, man, because all the wines for us are meant to be on the table together with great food and great company. Why is the first ever social media? This is there you the, go. Thing, the thing that in Italy is gathering people together. So the wine has a very nice distinctive acidity. That's my key point. Fresh fruit up front, nice standing to close the door at the end and never in the front. That's the deal. So you get your mouth ready for the next bite all the time and one bottle open is one bottle that goes down. Absolutely. And that's what I think what a lot of American wines lack. You know, they're easy drinking, they're very round, rich, polished, a lot of fruit up front, whereas your wines are very rustic in a very good way. Yeah. Good acid, good tannins. All right, so let's, uh, let's get a lot along. This is going to be kind of a longer show. I apologize, but uh, uh, Godiolo. Yeah, Godiolo is a great estate, Montepulciano, one mile from the city center of Montepulciano. Uh, six hectares, so it's about 18 acres, something like that. It's a small thing. We're practicing organic farming. And this is our entrance wine, the Rosalie Montepulciano 09. Very fruity, very all upfront, easy wine to open without formalities from pizza to Thai. God, you know, just the nose on these wines. This is a little bit vanilla. Tell, tell us a little bit about your uh, aging on this wine and the great varietals that are in this wine. Yeah, for the tree, it's a blend of the local clone of Sangiovese called Prugnolo Gentile. And then for about 90%, sometimes more, and the rest are three local varietals, Mamolo, Colorino, and Canaiolo. That's it. Guys, that's what I love about guys like this coming in. Off the grid, great varietals, you know? That's what I try to strive, especially my wine classes. Let's drink something outside the box, and these are definitely on the money. So this is the, your newest wine, it's 2009. 2009, that should be like uh, a wine that is conceived to be or by the glass or one of the cheapest coal in the wine list. No formalities, zero Zero worries, you open uncork, pour. It's a great pasta wine. It's got nice yeah. acidity. Mm, wow, lip smacking yeah. acidity, a little bit of tannins. It's got a charcoal kind of flavor. Yeah. A little minerality. Yeah, uh, that's because of our, of our land. It's a very nice mixed soil. You have clay, you have seed debris, you have everything. You have sand, you have everything you need to get to that point. Very cool, very cool. All right, man, let's, let's move right along. Uh, let's do the next one. And this is a 2007. Uh, Godiolo. Yeah, so our main man. Uh, this is the core. That always your main man. Yeah, uh, that's just later, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do for a living. Sure. The Vino Nobile is the core part of the production. Uh, same blend, longer aging. We use um, French tonneau, 500 liters um, from Allier, medium or light toasting, and we ease, ease up the tonneau with the Rosso, and so the smoky finish is a bit softer. So on the, on the Nobile. What was your first vintage that you actually did on your own? Um, I first stuck my finger in the, in the pulp in 2004. Sticking his finger in the pulp in 2004. I won't go anywhere with that one. Well, I can say I <laughs> like to go down and dirty. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's what I was expecting out of you. All right, 2007, five-year-old wine now. Yeah, great elegance, great overall wine. Um, it's a wine that... It's been expressing all the typical details of the Vino Nobile. So here, from a great flexibility in the Rosso, we are moving on to the Red Meat District. The Red Meat District. 
kind of like after you hit the red light district in Amsterdam, you go yeah. to the red meat district. All right, so um, on these wines, price point wise, uh, retail, American dollars, not lira. I, oh, you no, guys I, have have no, I honestly have no idea. I talk about the wine, I preach about the wine. Pricing is your stuff. My Don't get stuff. Me there. Okay, Don't you know what? I, I will post these as we talk about them. I'll you make sure. You can read we... the price down here. Yeah, right, right there, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Right on the bottom <laughs> of the film. Um, great. All right. Uh, let's jump on to your last. Yeah, let's get real. Let's, uh, you know what? We are getting real. This is a 2003. Reserva. We are releasing Reservas only when it comes to a great vintage. Um, the other one we are talking about is the 06. We are going to have our final word when I go back to Italy. And then for sure we have some great 08 baking in the cellar. You know what's great is these are all DOCG uh, yeah, vineyards, and yeah. there's not a lot of DOCG vineyards. I mean, you know, if you look oh, at the you whole. Have to stick, oh, yeah, sometimes I wake up in the morning and say, oh, DOCG, why? Why? Because you have to stick so many requirements, regulation, papers sure. to fill. But at the end of the deal, when you have the estate fachette, the pink thing on the neck of the bottle, is the best guarantee that you can have from Italian wines. Absolutely. And I'll tell you guys, the 03, this is just beautiful. It's nice to see a wine in progression. Right here, and it's like it's growing bigger. The DNA it of is. my kids is the same, but simply, yeah, growing, 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 growing. This one is big for real. Mm -hmm. I don't That's want to spit this one. No, I can't. Yeah. This is a nine year old wine holding up like it's two or three years old. Yeah, great to see. It's this got a it, lot of life left in it. The acidity, you don't do any acidification, do you? No, yeah. it all comes from the grape. We do not even filter the wines. It's like to skip foreplay. I like that. Here, get right to the down and dirty, baby. I love you, man. I love you. All right. Uh, first three wines, wonderful. Let's talk about the Brunello. Oh, yeah. Brunello, Brunello de Montalcino. So, the estate was founded in 1970 from Johnny Fabri's dad, Signor Bruno. And Johnny took over the estate in um, 1998. At a certain point, he felt the need that he wanted to step out of his daddy's shadow. And he bought a piece of land to build his own cellar. And I went to the local archive, I discovered that the, that piece of land is called Ramoni. And it was like, <laughs> so happy, I was almost moved in tears. That was a great epiphany for me, because I'm a huge fan of the Ramones. God bless them. And so, it was automatically coming on my label. That's Ramones very cool. All the way, one, two, three, four. Pay a little homage to the Ramones, yeah. and be able to have a product of this quality, excuse me, in the bottle. 2005. Very traditional, a uh, medium large oak, 18 to 25 acre liters, Slovenian uh, oak, untoasted, very neutral. Is this your current? Yeah. The 05? Yeah. Your current release? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have an 05 and an 04, but I, I like it. Earthy. Yeah, once again, I mean, a distinctive acidity and a smacking balsamic. I can't. Now, bridles in this wine. All the way. This is it. It's 100% really? Sangiovese Grosso. You know, beautiful wine guy. Absolutely beautiful, Frederico. Love this. Love this. Love this. Yeah, wait for the reserve to come. Nah, I'm, stuff. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm just going to finish oh, yeah. <laughs> right yeah. here. Mm. Oh, you're done. <laughs> I, know, I got a lot of things other to do today, but I don't know how long I'm going to be doing them. It's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day. We're just getting it started. All right. Yeah, reserve. I'm working kids. <laughs> The difference between the, uh, the regular and the Reserva? So, every year in the vineyard, we make, a, in the very first day, a selection of the best grapes that are going to be, supposedly become a Reserva, and we have a separate batch. Then, we keep tasting and tasting and tasting, and we only release a Reserva when the gas is the regular one is used. For example, 05, there will be no need whatsoever for me to release a reserva that is going to hit the market together with the regular or six better wine for up the price. Sure. I won't be like keeping my customers. So that's why we've been releasing since 1978. This is our reserva, this is our reserva number six only. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so the vintages, uh, the different vintages uh, here in Oregon, you know, 07 was a little rainy. Uh, 06 over in, in, in Italy wasn't the greatest vintage, but it wasn't horrible. No, 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 no. Uh, 05 was um, colder vintage, a uh, bit more on the elegant side, while 04 overall is a great vintage and it's going to be in the 2000, it's going to be probably only beaten by 2009. Okay. How about last year? Oh, last year we had a lot less production, very elegant wine is 
Early to tell. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think being a farmer, like, you know, you, these are your vineyards. I look like a punk. But well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the roots, you know, he's a farmer and he takes care of his vineyards. You just pray and you hope every year the weather's going to cooperate. Yeah, being, being that, that's the exciting alive, thing. That's a gambling thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it seems like it's paid off with you and your gamble. Um, when it doesn't pay off, you don't see my label on the market. Like in 2002, we refused to produce the wine. Well, what's your, what's your total uh, uh, case production on, uh, on the, these wines? This is a um, couple of thousand cases. This is 1,000 cases, small things. So nothing. It's a drop no, in the no, bucket. Yeah, well, in the global scheme of things, yeah, yeah. nothing. I'm just a little, like, drop in the sea. You know, you're know, you welcome anytime here in Oregon, man. Thank Cheers. You. Oregon is my favorite place because being a Sangiovese guy, you know, I feel for the Pinots. Oh, yeah, there you go. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I like moody wines. Anything else you want to tell all your fans? I know. Your wife back Keep, home? <laughs> support your local small production of wine. Be strong on Oregon wines because they rock. And please, when you want to skip on something different, go Sangiovese all the way. Absolutely, guys. Hey. Thanks a lot for tuning in, Frederico. Thank you very much, dude. Gabba, gabba, hey. Gabba, gabba, hey, 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 hey. Okay, we will see you on the flip side, everybody. See you later. <laughs>